have worked hard to prepare this show for you, from writing an original script to rehearsing original acts. It is my privilege to introduce the fruit of their labor. There you guys are. You guys ready for tonight? Uh, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. What's wrong? What are you guys not telling me? Okay, hypothetical question. How long do we have before we need to act? Finalize the show? <clears throat> Please tell me you have something for tonight. Well, you see, it's a funny story. Donish, where is the script? Now, you see, that is the funny story. You know, due to circumstances that are completely unrelated and not at all related to us, we sort of kind of don't have anything. <clears throat> you're not mad, right? So, you're telling me that after all the time we gave, after all the trust we put in you, you have nothing. Well, it's all right, Mr. Wilson. We can just wing it. Yeah. Wings? We have people here to see you perform for the first time in over a year, and the best you're going to offer them is winging it. Uh, yeah. Mr. Marsden, you see, it's not all that bad. We've got some ideas, some acts we've been practicing, and we can pitch them to you if you just give us the chance. You know what? Fine, fine. I don't see another option, and so this is what we're doing. The show starts at 7.30. That gives you four hours to put together whatever scenes and acts might come to you. Normally, I would ban you from future shows for this sort of behavior, but luckily you're seniors, and so I won't have to deal with you again. You have 10 minutes to get started. Goodbye. You can print out the Pirates of Penzance score. That looks better than that. Yeah. All right, so we have acts. Yeah, no, I thought this was all a lie, but could you imagine what would happen if you told them the truth? Oof. Now we're in trouble. Yeah. Well, we gotta start thinking. Come on, guys. Tick, talk, tick, talk. Hello, boys. Uh, what, are you, what are you supposed to be? A figment of your imagination, an ethereal manifestation of time. In other words, time itself. You know what? That's great. But if you could just leave. I am here to collect the debt that is owed to me, to take your time. What do you mean you're gonna take away our time? You heard the man. Four hours left till the show. Time's ticking, boys. <laughs> okay, now we're really in trouble. Wow. Okay. You know what? I might have something we can do to stall there. Uh, let's see. Come on, please pick up. Uh, hey, Aiden. Yeah, it's Nick. Uh, remember the thing you were telling me about that like Irish dancing stuff? How soon can you be at Lilo? Wait. Yeah, slow down. Wait, what do you mean you're already here? Okay, run. 
We don't know how to hire things. What are you talking about? We just did it. That's debatable. At least one beat. But the thing is, we can't simply hire stands for two hours. You know, we're gonna need, we're gonna need something more, you know? Okay, so uh, what do you propose? Well, you know, we're pretty desperate. We could find a box of shows. A what? Oh, you never heard of it? It's an old drama club story. It's this box that contains copies of every single show we've ever done and more. They say it's even older than Lechner. Is that even possible? No, it's quite a myth. Well, I'm not banking on some myth for this show. I want something, something tangible, something, something epic. Something grand. I know, we could do The Hobbit, and Mr. Lightyear could play Bilbo. Ah, great idea. Because he's short. Yeah. He's short, right? Ah, perfect. <laughs> What's that? A swallow. Who's there? Blossoms and sprouts. Blossoms and sprouts. Say that. Where was this house in this hand? It's a sword. An elvish blade. It came out of God. Ah, uh, shop has a sit on hats of a bit so. A bank has brought us riddles. Does it? You mean me? Yes. Very well, if you insist. After you. So, what has ropes as crevices, column shows, and the perfect goes, and love never goes? Easy. Mountain. So, now if you kindly just. Ah, uh, so that John against the buzz of her. It's most of the competition that's been precious. If he wins it, he wins it. The test better for him, is it? If he wins, we'll start on the way as ah, let's. Let's go, let's go. Just a minute. Ah, uh, 30 white horses on a hill. First they champ, then they stamp. And then they stand still. process. But we only have six now. Martin, who's a short one? A plump brand, but curled as down. Then of course, I will jump in. Then I will never think. Just a minute. <sighs> Wait, I give you a long while to guess. Well, you didn't bother to find out, did you? Well, 
Look, about the old Bowman comment earlier, I said I'm sorry about that. Why object to being automatically treated as an inferior? Well, I am your king. Oh, king, eh? Very nice. And how'd you get that, eh? By exploiting the workers, by hanging on to outdated imperialist dogma, which perpetuates social and economic differences in our society. Oh, that is this lovely filth of here. Oh, how do you do? Oh, how do you do, my good man? I am Arthur, king of the Britons. Uh, whose castle is that? Um, king of the who? King of the Britons. And who are the Britons? Uh, we are. We are all Britons. And I'm your king. Well, I didn't know we had a king. I thought we were an autonomous collective. You're fooling yourself. We're living in a dictatorship. A self-perpetuating autocracy in which the working class is- Oh, there you go, making class into it again. Well, that's what it's all about. If people were just- Please, please, my good people. I'm in haste. What night lives in that castle there? Why, no one lives there. What? Then who, who is your lord? We don't have a lord. What? I told you, we're an anarcho-syndicalist commune. We take turns acting as a sort of executive officer for the week. And all decisions by that officer have to be ratified in a bi-weekly meeting. be quiet. For a simple majority of purely internal affairs. Shut up. But by two-thirds majority for more major Shut affairs. Shut up, I order you to be quiet. Who the hey, who does he think he is? J I, I'm your king. Well, I didn't vote for you. You don't vote for kings. So how did you become king then? Well, by the lady of the lake, her arm clad in shimmering sunlight, held aloft Excalibur from the bosom of the water, signifying by divine providence that I, Arthur, am destined to wield Excalibur. And that is why I am your king. Listen, strange women lying in ponds, distributing swords of no basis from us for a system of government. What? Supreme executive power derived from a mandate from the masses. Be quiet. Not some farcical aquatic ceremony. Shut up. You expect to wield supreme executive power just because some watering thought threw a sword at you? Shut up. If I went around saying I was emperor just because some moist and mid threw a spitfire at me, they'd put me away. Shut up, will you Come shut up? Come and see up. the violence in here in the system. Come and see the violence in here in the system. Help, I'm being shut repressed. Up. Bloody peasant. What a giveaway! Did you hear that? Did you hear that, eh? You saw him repressing me. You saw it, didn't you? Halt! Who goes there? Oh, I am Arthur, son of Uther Pendragon from Castle Camelot, King of the Britons, Slayer of the Saxons, sovereign to all in. Who is the other one? Oh, this? This is my trusted servant, Patsy. We have ridden the length and trot of this land in search of noble knights who will join me in my court at Camelot. Tell me, is your lord and master home? What, ridden on the horse? Yes. You're using coconuts. What? You've got two halves of the coconuts and you're banging them together. So? We have ridden since the snows of winter have covered this land. Through the kingdom of Mercia, through... Well, where'd you get the coconuts? Uh, we found them. Found them? In Mercia, the coconuts are tropical. So? Well, this is the temperate zone. Well, the swallow may fly with the sun, or the house martin, or the plumber. They may seek warmer climes in winter. Yet, these are not strangers to our land. Are you suggesting coconuts migrate? What? No, not at all. They could be carried. Well, a small carry a coconut? Well, you see, it could grip it by the husk. It's not a matter of where it grips it. It's a simple matter of weight ratios. A five-ounce bird cannot carry a one-pound coconut. Well, so it doesn't matter. Will you please tell your lord and master that Arthur from Camelot is here to see him? Listen, in order to maintain airspeed velocity, a swallow has speed its wings 43 times per second. Please? Am I right? I'm not interested. It could be carried by an African swallow. Oh, yeah. An African swallow, maybe. But not a European swallow. That's my point. But will you please tell your lord and master that I am here to see him? But then again, African swallows are not migratory. Oh, yeah. So it couldn't bring it back anyway. Wait. Suppose two swallows carried it together. No, they'd have to have one on a line. Well, simple. They could just use a string of creeper. What, under the dorsal guidance feathers? Why not? Oh, what a question.
those seeds were great. We can actually make something out of it. But we should probably take a break. I'm kind of hungry. How about we get some, uh... Oh, Mexican. Mexican standoff! Oh, perfect. We got it. That's Let's big go. brain. Big brain. Big brain. Do we still get food? No. Uh-uh. I mean it. So do I. I'm not a of the I'm not cold on the hand. That can be arranged. You and I will kill you. Not far kill this guy. You should, I should. Okay, then. Your funeral. Let's go. Fine. 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 This is a little awkward. Yeah. There's a lot of tension here. Hang on. What? Why are you yelling? Because, um, I'm a little nervous. Sorry, you got a gun put into my head. I can relate. Me too. You don't really want to shoot me, do you? Want to bet? Shut up or I'll shoot you, but you're not pointing the gun at me. So? So you can't really threaten me. Fine, I'll threaten him. And if he tries to calm me down, I'll shoot you. So everybody dies? Yep, looks that way. And everyone's okay with this? Can I say something? Absolutely. Go ahead. I think I'm pointing my gun at the wrong guy. What? You're joking. No, I think I'm pointing my gun at the wrong guy. That's great, that's just great. Sorry. It's a great day. That's a great day to say anything like that. I mean, where's the booth now? Huh? You want to tell me? Fuck uh, me too. Okay, do we need to review who's the boss of shooting who here? Whom? Really? I think he's right. I was never gonna grab her, okay? Alright. Who is supposed to be shooting whom? Well, I need to shoot with him. And I wanna whack you. Honestly, I'd rather. Let's go. Time to die. I'm gonna blow you away. Not if I've got anything to say about it, because I'm good. I'm gonna turn your body into soup and feed you to my pet chinchilla. Wow. He's trying to get a headache. Anybody got any more bright ideas? Why don't we all put our guns away until we get this figured out? How about on three? All right, you start. Me? No, him. Why him? Why not? He's got a gun to my head. Fine, you start. Me? No, him. Why him? Oh, for Pete's sake. I just don't know why I can't start. Fine, you start! Okay. One, two. two. Sorry, go ahead. It's fine. Two. Three. <laughs> we should expect that. All right, this time for real. All right. Yeah. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. We're going to be here all day. You know, I had it what you two had it. You're cool, you're cool. Don't do anything stupid. All this gunpoint and no shooting is pathetic. You're pathetic. You deserve one of those cool black suits. Hey, don't stop the dress code. See this? Like, take it out of here. Come on, man. Punch your gun back at me. Why at me, okay? You can point back at me. I asked him first. So what? Make a better target. I was a better target. Will you stop arguing? How's it going? Pretty good. So, uh, you completed your assignment for this week? Yeah, I'm actually uh, rather proud of this one. So your assignment for this week was to write a completely original song. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's hear it. Okay. Speed it up a little bit and add a little swing to it. Wait a second, it's a classical piece. I don't want to swing it. I just want to check something. All right. Yeah. Uh, that, one. that sounds a lot like uh, country roads. <sighs> Dang it, man! I, I was proud of that one. He even gave it a name. What'd you call it? I called it uh, Empty Streets. So is this what you've been working on all week? 
No, I did some other things too. Like uh, what other things? Uh, here, uh, like this. So in this case, uh, C major, and then E minor, and then maybe A minor, and then lastly, F major. Okay, so here's the progression. Okay, so am I in the clear so far? So far. Okay, sweet. So I'm going to add some broken chords and uh, two beats per chord. Is uh, that your vehicle there, sir? Yes, yes it is. All right, and uh, what is your name, sir? Right. Hold on a second. Ready? Yeah. My name is Derek. Well, what are you doing? That's my name. What is? This. Derek. What, Derek? <laughs> is your name? Yes. What kind of a name is that? It's my name. An unusual name, isn't it, Mr. If I had a dollar for every time someone said that to me. Right, right. How exactly would you go about spelling, uh, Mr. Uh, it's as it sounds. Uh huh, right. I don't actually mind if you spelled it for me. Well, can't you just. I'd be very grateful if you spelled it for me. P U K hyphen E. Pew. I beg your pardon? Pew. Puke? P-U-K-E. Puke. Hyphen E. Hyphen E. Spells puke in my book. It does not spell... What is wrong with you? I thought the modern policeman was supposed to be a highly trained law enforcement unit. You can't even spell. All right, Mr. Puke. Got an address? What's your address? Are you talking to me? Yes. 
You want to know my address? Please. Or do you want to know Mr. Puke's address? Over Your here? address, please, sir. Okay, okay. My address is number 22, Ballard Road. Watch it! What? Just watch it! What? What for heaven's sake? You do realize that assaulting a police officer is an extremely serious offense? Yes, I imagine it probably is very serious. But telling an officer your address, on the other hand, is probably not very serious. Or is it? Perhaps the law has changed since I looked. Perhaps Homeland Security has had to take stern measures against the rising tide of people giving their address whenever they're asked to. All right, all right. Ask a stupid person, you get a stupid answer. Excuse me? All right, so let me just check this with you, Mr. Uh... Yes? Your address is number 22. Oh! Ballad Road. No, no, no! I didn't say that. It's... Ballard Road. Oh, I'm sorry. It was 22. I thought it was 22. Oh! Ballard Road. Well, I didn't say that. Oh, I'm sorry. It seems I can't read my own writing. I'll get a typewriter then. If only we could afford it. Actually, at some angles, this almost looks like number 22. Oh. Ballard Road. Oh. Okay, that was, okay, that was too hard. That was too hard. Oh, you're right, sir. I really should get a typewriter. That was too hard. Well, you must admit, sir, it's an unusual act. Hey, never mind the sketch, Danish. It was too hard. It really hurt. Oh, boo hoo. The, the nasty actor with the poor little twerp. Oh, he's just a child. So, how's the scene go? You know what? All right. Well, then I'm kind of tired. Want to go grab some coffee? Yeah, sure. Um, I, heard a, I heard a local band's playing. I thought maybe we could go down, down to the shop, go so talk to the band guys and see if they might want to do the show. Bye. 
You know what, you're right. I went with my college theater career to be jeopardized by a guy's irresponsibility. Zach. Excuse me? You think this is a joke, Mo? You've heard the same stories I've heard. Lecter can ruin you if you don't do what he asks. Um, I'm interested in the drama club. That's our guy. Scapegoat! Wait, what? That's our scapegoat. Come on. Come Get over here. Come on. Get over here. Our scapegoat. Hello. And welcome to Northridge Drama Club. Yes. You, my friend, are a new student director. Yes. Well, what's a student director? Well, it means that you're in charge of the drama program, not us. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, hold on a second. Yeah, Mom, you're not going to believe what just happened. Right. With that out of the way, we can go back to thinking some new ideas. Come on. Let's come up with more ideas for the show. What else? We Tick got? tock. No. Tick. No. 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 We don't have time for you. Yeah, we don't have time for this. No. Nope. But I'm. But I'm literally tired. Okay, but we're in the middle of a break. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just go? get out of here? Go, I, please. Yeah. Just go. Out of here. Kind of messing with our vibe. Thank man. you. All right. Okay. Now we can actually get back to thinking. All right. What could we do? Oh, what about what about that? That, that, that box of shows Nick was talking about earlier. Yeah, the box of shows. Where could we find a conveniently placed box with a copy of every single show we've ever done? The basement. The basement? basement. Yeah, the basement. Everyone knows that's where Lechner keeps copies of all the old shows and whatnot. Oh, hmm. that could be something. That could be something. Hold on a second. Hot! Coming! Ow, 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 ow! Whoa, whoa! That's really a good direction. Sadly. Okay. Anyway, uh, Hans, I want you and Mo to go down to the basement and look for this box of shows or whatever. And uh, while you're going to go do that, Nick and I will stay up here and uh, you know come up with more ideas for the show. All right. Let's go. Really think you're going to find anything? No, not really. It's the basement. Man, look at all the stuff. I could almost actually believe the box of shows could be down here. I got my phone. One sec, Hans. Okay. So, Hans. Yes? You're down here. Who's keeping that door open? <laughs> what are you talking about? The door don't lock from the inside. You're absolutely correct. Except the door locks from the outside, Hans. Wait, what? Hello, is anybody there?
but a crooked politician. You know it ain't news no more. Come down to Grand Central Station, down to City Hall. We improve our circulation, walk into we Say what you wish, it goes tradition. 
And it's just went completely over your head. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Oh, that sounds man. all right. Well, looks like I'm gonna have to explain it to you the old-fashioned way. Boring style. Remember, you asked for this. Okay, I am a genie. I am in your service because you robbed that they length. I am in your service until you use up the, how many wishes they get nowadays? Uh, one, two, three, yes. The three wishes that you're now in possession of. So I can wish for anything, right? <laughs> wish for everything? Can you believe this guy has to be wished for everything? <laughs> no, you can't wish for everything, there's rules. Rule number one, I cannot kill anybody for you. Wouldn't do my style, you know? Plus, this, this doesn't really do much. Rule number two, cannot make anybody fall in love with you. It really doesn't work. <laughs> I would know. Hey, um, you okay? Ah, fine, why do you ask? Uh, yeah, where was I? Uh, yes, rule number three. I cannot bring anybody back from the dead. Please do not ask me to do this. That's a really scary business. <sighs> All right, so with that in mind, what's wish number one gonna be? Well, I can't really do much since I'm stuck down here. Oh, come on, that is the oldest trick in the book. You're gonna get me to show off my powers, and the minute I question you on it, you're gonna whine, and you're gonna say, oh, well, I didn't wish for that. No, you're going to explicitly say, Genie, I wish to leave this basement. Uh, Genie, I wish to leave this basement. Can I get a please while we're in the mood? No. Wow, okay, we got a feisty one in our hands. That doesn't matter. All right, wish number one has been granted. Surface world, here we come! I'm at my wit's end right now. I've got, I'm running out of ideas. We've got we have 15 minutes left until we have to present something. Where's Moe and Hansi? We've gone forever. Where'd Nick go? Oh, I, I'm running out of ideas. You got any ideas? You got any ideas? Anyone? I'm out, I'm out of ideas. I got nothing. Monty Python seemed like it went well. More Monty Python, I guess. by that rickety bridge, sire. You mean that old man standing by that rickety bridge that spans that fiery chasm? Yes. Oh, well, uh, he is the keeper of the bridge of death. He'll ask each traveler five, three, three questions, if I'm saying. Uh, what happens if we get the question wrong? Well, I'm not sure, though I'm certain it has nothing to do with that muscular man standing with the club next to him, though it has, may have something to do with that chasm. Oh, well, who should ask first? Ah, brave Sir Robin! No, I think so. That's not should go. Fine. Stop! The other side, you wish to see. Answer me these questions, sir. Ask away? I am not afraid. What is your name? My name is Sir Lancelot of Camelot. What is your quest? I seek the Holy Grail. What is your favorite color? Blue. Okay, off you go then. Oh, that's easy. The other side you want to see. Answer me these questions. Ask me the questions, I'm not afraid. What is your name? Sir Robin of Camelot. What is your quest? I seek the Holy Grail. What is the capital of Assyria? I don't know that. The other side you wish to see, answer me these questions too. What is your name? Sir Galahad of Camelot. What is your class? Seek the Holy Grail. What is your favorite color? Favorite color? It's blue. Wait, no, it's red. I like red. Answer me this question, sir. Ask away. What is your name? I am Arthur, King of the Britons. What is your quest? I seek the Holy Grail. What is the hour velocity of an unladen swallow? Well, what do you mean, an African swallow or a European swallow? I, I don't know that. Ah! <laughs> How do you know so much about swallows? You must know these things when you're a king. Okay, okay, that was...
was good, but we have 10 minutes left, man. This time is really starting to add up. Add up? We can do addition. Addition, addition. <laughs> What's up? You wanna to go to Goldfield? Nah, I can't. Why not? I got work to do. You work? Don't bother me. I'm very busy. Ah, busy with what? Mr. Fagan asked me to set up these things for hey, me. Hey, donuts! Don't, oh, don't come on, one donut. Don't. I can barely afford it. I've got barely got enough. After all, I only bought 28 of these things, and they're all seven teachers I gotta feed. I only have enough to give each teacher 13 donuts apiece. Wait, what? I only have enough to give each teacher 13 donuts apiece. Um, 13 apiece. Yes. There are seven teachers. Uh huh. Each guy 13. That's correct. And you only got 28. Right again. 7 and 13 are 28? Yeah. Yeah, I see a problem here. You see, 7 times 4 is 28, not 7 times 13. 7 times 4 is 28. Exactly. <laughs> 7 times 4 is 28. This guy must not be very bright. 7 times 13 is 28. Oh, that's ridiculous. Come on, I'll figure it out for you. All right. All right. And I got to figure it out, no kidding. You have? Yeah, I figured it out myself. All right, prove okay. it. So we got seven teachers. Seven, all right. Now I'm gonna divide and prove to you. We got 28 donuts and seven teachers. 28 donuts, now hold on a second. You're still claiming that seven goes into 28 13 times. Absolutely. All right, go ahead. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is seven into two. What do you mean seven into two? Seven will not go into two no matter how hard you try. Right. Therefore, we cannot use the two. So what are you gonna do with it? I'm gonna put it, put the two, Right there. There you go. Okay. Don't worry, we'll use it later. If we don't want to worry. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is 7 from 8. 1. 1. Right. Put a 1 up here and a 1 down there. Now, a minute ago, we didn't use that 2. What do you mean? I'm going to use it now. Use it? Where did I put the. Ah. Yeah. Okay. 7 into 21. Uh, 3 times. Three, 7 into 28. 13 times. Wait. Uh, come here. I never go to school, stupid. Yeah, and it came out the same way. I never mind about that. Um, multiply it. Okay. Uh, put on 13 up there. 13. Right. And you say there's 7 teachers. Yes. Then put on 7. Okay. Draw a line. Okay. Now uh, you're saying 7 times 13 is 28. Yes. Prove it. Okay, first thing we're gonna do, seven into three. Uh, 21. Okay, shut up. Seven times one. Seven. 21 plus seven. 28, Whoa. it comes out right every time. Well, that's a problem, it shouldn't come out right every time. It better come out right or I go to detention. All that right. I know. Just a minute, all right, just a minute. Uh, here, we add this up. We add this up, all right? Okay, you do that, stupid. Hey, language. Um, uh, I'm gonna write down 13 seven times. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. And you say all of these add up to 28. Every single time. No. Watch. All right. Okay. Gonna add this up. Three, six, nine, twelve. This is fifteen. 18 and 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28. No! It's getting kind of late. You kids here for detention. Oh, uh, Kenobi. Yeah? I'm assuming you're here for detention? Uh, yep. Yeah, we'll make sure you don't make too much noise, okay? Alright, I'll try. I get to this one.
right kind of parents. I'm gonna be perfectly frank. Do you wanna know what kind of conversation goes on with the wolf around that wall? So they're trying to beat them, trying to chew them, trying to tell them it's like cigarette beans, and bragging all about how they're gonna come up and tell to the friends with sex one by night. They leave the pool and even the devil's in the ugly, liberty, and the skull of women, and rag time. Shameless pieces, they'll grab your son, your daughter, with the odds of a drunk, with animal insect, mass hysteria. Friends, that'll bring the devil's playground trouble. Tonight, we look at the first date. Obviously, taking out a girl for the first time is a very complex issue. The first crucial step is having arranged to pick up your date, not to look like a complete idiot when she first opens the door. Best as if your attention has been momentarily distracted. But when you do notice her, it is vital to say how pretty she's looking straight away. But don't overdo it. <laughs> if at this point you're introduced to her appearance, attitude is all important. You can be too casual. You can be too keen. <laughs> When you have said goodbye to the parents, again, don't overdo it. And lead her to your car. Once in the car, there are various ways of driving. If you drive like Mr. Lechner, you might lose her respect. But if you drive like Mr. Marsden, you probably should have taken a taxi. Before long, you'll arrive at the restaurant. Get out of the car. <laughs> and escort her to your table. Then tuck her into her seat, yourself. And attract the waiter's attention. Selecting from the wine list is important. Complete ignorance is not good. <laughs> when the bottle arrives, there's much to be made in the tasting of it. But don't be too professional.
with eating, again, moderation is the order of the day. Don't eat too fast. But don't eat too slowly. Next is receiving the bill. This is a very important moment. You must be sure not to lose your cool. This is right. This is wrong. <laughs> the girl may, of course, offer to pay for herself, in which case you should refuse. For a while. Next stop is a fashionable discotheque. Once inside, you might look slightly strange if you try and talk over the music. So just stand casually and try to look fly. This is good. This is better. This is starting to be misguided. After stance, dance technique is most important. Most people don't know how to dance and so do too much. <laughs> Other people do too little. Some people dance as if there's something up their bottom. And other people dance as if there's something coming out of their bottom. When all said and done, it's probably best not to dance. A well-mined sporting injury is always useful and a good excuse for leaving the discotheque. When nearing 9.30 p.m., it is time to take her home before it strikes 10. If you don't utterly foul it up, 20 minutes later, you should be back at her parents' house. But just before you say goodbye, you look into her eyes, get close, and gently shake her hand. Good, but I have no idea how they got here. Okay, but, but we should probably end this off with a classic. We have all the scenes we need. Right, so. one more scene and a classic of. We can do the little pigs, yeah! Yeah, all right, right let's, go. let's go. <laughs> all right, ready control, three pigs set, take one. Starting in five, four, three, two. Here it is. Live on tape from the Piggy Stylish Pen in Newport City. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Ham Box Office presents the three little pigs. You know the story. The first little pig, Hogging the Dangerous Field, built this out of straw. That alone should tell you how smart he is. I saw that. No respect. I get no respect from anybody. And the second little pig was a bit smarter. He built this house of sticks. His name was Shakespeare, and his problem was his ego. He thinks all the world's a stage. Hark, tis true, all the world's a stage, and the players have merely second billing to me, the star. And the third snout-hearted little fellow. Oh, uh, excuse me, can we stop with the pig puns, please? Sorry, I was just trying to ham it up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> At least be funny. Uh, take two. And the third pig built his house of bricks. He was a genius and his name was Albert Schweinstein. Everybody knows he's so smart because of the theory he developed. The harder a wood blows, the sooner a poorly built house will fall down. I call them my theory of relatives because that's what it gets me. Relatives, a whole house full. Serves me right for building a nice, strong brick house. Now before you all go hog wild with hey, anticipation, let our show begin. Good morning, my two brothers. Good morning? For it to be a good morning, I would have to get some respect. But do I get respect? Never! In fact, just this morning, I stepped out my door and was run over by the welcome wagon. Alas, and alack. I have a theory that unless one works his legs as much as his mouth, chores are already finished. Tell me, Agni, have you gathered the eggs, milked the cows, made the beds, or even started breakfast? How can I? The mailman doesn't even ring my doorbell. A bell by any other name would chime my squeak. A bell, a bell, my pigdom for a bell. 
It's uh, no good under these lights. It isn't. No, the shadows are all off. Uh, they look much too happy. Happy, but I don't feel happy. Don't worry, I think we can fix it. Makeup! I think it's coming. Ah, much better. Now, before we get started again, tell me, do, you're, do you have your agent's name and phone number on file? My agent? What do you mean? You know, your agent, uh, discuss your salary, your vacation, your home, you know, all the fringe benefits. I don't have an agent. I've never had an agent. No agent, huh? Well, uh, what's your pay? I mean, how long's your vacation? Well, actually, I haven't paid. I haven't had a vacation in years. No pay, no vacation, no fringe benefits. Okay, well, you need is an agent. Me, stand up, Sharon, I talk to you. I'll handle you for 40% of the gross, plus expenses. We'll start by demanding 1,000 per show. Then we'll do commercials. Let me see your teeth. Hmm. We'll cut a hit record. Which you prefer? Cut to your right. Well, in no time I'll all have you right where you belong. Hollywood. You mean it? Of course, Wolfie. I'll make you a star. Okay, hold on a second. What about the director's cut? Don't worry. Everyone will get their piece of the pie. Or slice of bacon in this case. I do not like the sound of that. Wow, me a star. Let me see your profile. Hmm. A little makeup would help. Makeup! Makeup coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Wolfie. Now remember, stay away from little girls in red riding hoods, and don't call me. I'll call you. How about that, pig? Do you won't have a big red wolf that kicks around anymore. No respect! I get no respect from anybody! First someone came to my house and stole my car, and then they came and stole my watchdog! Alas, a poor mongrel. I knew him well. I won't have to hop for pop for listeners. Anyway, there is a fun boy. I also have a theory that the more energy one uses to operate the mouth, the more it reduces the relative amount to operate the mind. I want to tell you. All right, guys, enough, enough, all right? We don't have all day. Let's get on with this. Go what? You know what? The scene. The three little pigs. OK, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hop, I'm going to pop, I'm going to blow our house down. My idea of the woman's problem is believability. We must make the audience truly believe it's gonna blow down our houses, even though it's made out of brick, and he, in fact, cannot. Oh, you're so smart. Well, my fine little sausages, I'm gonna have myself a ham with sausage. Are you ready? One, two, three! Hold it, hold it. That's not in the script, and you know it. Ah, for you! The script writer, that's who, and that's not in the script. You should know the lines. You've been over them a thousand times. Of course I know the lines. Huh? The hairs on my chinny chin chin. Then you should know it's on Hamlet's sandwich. So I'm gonna puff, and I'm gonna huff, and I'm gonna blow your house down. Well, I, I just thought. No, all skip changes must have the writer's approval. But I switched up a few words, it's nothing really. You say skip change is nothing? I have an Emmy, two Oscars, and a Pulitzer Prize for skip writing. And you wanna change my lines? So writers like me who have to come with the immortal ring around the collar and plop, plop, fizz, fizz. There'll be no script changes whatsoever. And another thing, your makeup is all wrong. Makeup! Makeup coming! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna <coughs> and blow your house down. All right, guys, cut. Strike production. It's all over now. Wait, what? What, what are you talking about? Well, uh, word just came from the producer. The, um, the sponsor, good old boy Sausage, Bacon, and uh, Pickled Pig's Feet, says the show is bad for their image. They canceled the program. Cancel? It's what I've been saying all along. No respect. All is not well, that ends. It's a new theory, cancelization, due to the lack of sponsors. Ah, uh, I know what the problem was. We should have had more class and more sophistication, more exchange in foreign dialect. No, in Latin. Pig Latin. <laughs> Pig Latin. Pig Latin. What a terrible job to make up. Make a moment. Wow, guys, I can't believe you really pulled it off. How'd you do it? You would not believe what. We are just that good. 
Well, I gotta admit, I got a little worried there, and I did print out the Pirates of Penzance for just in case. Yeah, no, I mean, we got this. Yes, you do. But I still do wish that we could do Pirates of Penzance. Maybe next year. As long as I wish. Uh, you know, Mr. Mars, and you shouldn't say all that stuff like just willy nilly, you know? You never know who or what could be listening, you know? Yeah. But I do. I, I do wish we could do Pirates of Penzance. Oh, he said the words! Uh, Oh, all right. Mm, pirates. Mm, great choice. Let's see. We got a pirate hat for you, a pirate hat for you, a very nice pirate hat for you. But wait, there's more. You also get this state-of-the-art cloak and this sword. And one for you for good measure. All right, everybody, it has been a pleasure. Thank you for having me, and you have been the most terrific of masters. <laughs> Thank you.